Welcome back to Piss and Portage Secret Laboratory. So for today's video, we are going to have fun with math. We are actually going to size our fourth gear on our four-speed ratchet top transmission to uh, the fourth gear main bearing race and uh, give you a little explanation about what's going on with my particular transmission and hopefully that'll help other people in the future if they run into similar issues um and you know I'd try to take some of the the secrecy out of this particular aspect at least about you know how these are put together so uh, without further ado let's uh get to it all right so the first thing that you're going to want to do when you do this is you got to get one of your your loose roller bearings and then you need to take this loose roller bearing and measure this width um, so you know for something like this what we would use typically would be something like this put it in here you know take this pinch it in here and that gives you your number okay so easy enough so once you've measured this you're going to want to write that number down uh minus mine was the stock number so the stock roller bearing is 0.125 inches okay so um i got my first number here for my second number what i need to do is i need to take my my fourth gear and i need to measure this width here so to do that we're going to get out the bigger one and we're going to take this and we're going to measure the width here. Okay. And I already did that. And so I don't need to try to use that tool. There's probably plenty of videos about how to do that. Um, regardless, my fourth gear was 1.627 inches. Okay. So I got that number. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to add the width of our bearings to the width of our fourth gear. So to do that, you're going to, if you imagine this running in this, okay, there's going to be a whole slew of bearings going around here. But if you think about, you know, there really is only going to be one here and one here when you're looking, when you're looking at the width from here to here. So... What that means is essentially you can either multiply it by two, or if you don't like to do multiplication, you can literally just add 0.125 plus 0.125. Um, and that's going to give, for me, I ended up at 0 0.250. Okay, so that's my two bearings, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then I'm going to add that to fourth gear. Okay, so I got 1.627 inches plus 0 0.250 inches. And that's going to give me 1.8770 inches. Okay. So that's my, that's my, the distance between, you know, that's the width of this plus two bearings. Um, so this plus two bearings on the outside. Yeah, there, like that. So uh, now that I have that number, I actually need to take a, a bore gauge and measure my fourth gear race. And to do that, you can take this bore gauge and you slide it in there, kind of add it and set it at an angle, and then you know add a little tension here on the bottom of the tool, and then pick a pivot point, which is gonna be the you know this side here, I'm gonna pivot there, and then I'm just gonna slide it and just pivot just there, and bring it out until it releases. And then I'm going to take a measurement there. And I'm going to do this multiple times typically because I want to make sure I get an accurate measurement. So once I do that, then you can bust out your tool and measure this, you know, in here. So we'll do it one more time. We're going to put this in here, put it in an angle, tighten this, and then pivot just on one of the sides and draw it through. Okay? Like that. And then we're going to measure that and, you know, you just want to keep, you know, do that as many times as you feel comfortable until you come up with 
the same number multiple times and then you're happy with that number. So, um, so I did that. And when I did that, I ended up at 1.8795 inches. Okay. So that's the distance, you know, on a race from here to here. So now I need to take this distance here and I need to subtract the distance that we already calculated, which is the width of this and this plus two bearings and find out what the difference is to see if it's within spec. So if I do that, I end up at 0 0.0025 inches. Okay. Now, according to the workshop manual, the factory workshop manual, I need to have 0 0.0005 inches to 0 0.002 inches. So as you can see, I'm actually outside of the spec by, you know, 0 0.0005 uh, inches. So in order to achieve spec or find out if your race uh, is so far gone that you actually need to replace it, there are oversized available, and I did the math here. Um, the oversized available, you have 0 0.0004, 0 0.0008, and then 0 0.0010. Um, and to do the math on this is just going to be, you know, the 1.254, right? Because it's just this, it's this size plus that little bit. Um, and then you can go through and calculate this whole thing again times it by two, you know, add it to the fourth gear distance, and then that gets your number, and then subtract it from the race, and then what I end up at, if I did the first oversize, would be 0 .0017 inches, and that is within spec, so great. But, you know, being me, I, I probably want to get something a little bit tighter. I'd like to get closer to the 0 .0005 inches, um, just because it gives you a higher wear limit. Um, as the motor, you know, continues to go down the road. So uh, if I went to 0 0.0008 inches, I would end up at 0 0.0009 inches of clearance, which is closer to the 0 0.0005. But if I went to the 0 0.0010 inches oversize, I can actually get right on that number, which is, is pretty damn great. Um, in my opinion, some people might err closer to uh, the middle on this. Um, if I was going to use this exact setup, I would probably run as cl close as I could to the point zero 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 five as I, you know as possible. But um, now we're going to explain why I'm not actually going to run any of this stuff because what I found out when I was going through my transmission and if you're following along at all you understand that my particular transmission is probably worse off than a lot of them is that when i was looking at this particular uh they call it a thrust washer it's a shim it runs on the fourth gear between the race you know between the race uh and the you know sits inside here and um like that, I suppose. It sits inside here, and then the bearings sit against it, and yay, um, that's what it does. So when I was looking at mine, you could see the wear on this is really weird. I have this one part here that has is showing absolutely zero wear, and then on this part here, I got wear going all the way around it. So what I did was I got out my... Uh, micrometer and I measured the distance around it and I actually found out that um, this particular shim is is dramatically different in different in thicknesses throughout the width um, and in my opinion I feel like a shim should be an accurate you know piece of machinery that I can use to shim something to create an accurate tolerance and at that point i'm not able to use this one to create an accurate tolerance because it's worn crooked now i had to do a little bit more diving 
to find out why it was worn crooked. And I had to do a little bit of, you know, thinking and what have you is about uh, these transmissions and how they operate. And what I came up with here on mine was that here's my clapped out fourth gear and here's my race or excuse my my uh, thrust washer or my shim and what's happening you know when you if you think about how this operates is it turns you know like this um and it pulls on the rear wheel and the, you know the pull it pulls from the top like that and the chain's going like this to the rear wheel and so it all the tension is pulling this actually like this as much as it can and because my transmission was so out of spec this is exactly how i took it apart was so out of spec that it had the stock bearings in it and it could have had the largest oversize possible in it by this point um, but because it didn't it had a lot more extra movement like this and what was happening here you know if you put it in here if i want to you know i could just do it here is that it's actually kind of like running like like uh like this okay like canted because it's pulling like that every time it tries to turn over and what that did not only did it cause excessive wear on my uh, inner bushing here, which is, you know, caught part, partially why it failed, possibly. Uh, it also, funny thing, is it actually caused extreme wear on my race, on my engine here, right on the, on this lip right here, because this gear was pushing like this every time it tried to turn over and the whole thing's moving and it's what so what i found when i measured this is that this side was thinner dramatically thinner than this side um so no matter what i did if i was to take my brand new gear and my and a brand new shim washer and the correct roller bearings is that no matter what I did, this thing was always going to sit crooked inside here because this particular piece is worn crooked. And what that's going to do is it's going to cause my bushing to wear out sooner because it's going to be always pulled like this, uh, you know, against the, the main shaft. And then that's going to cause this to fail early. That's going to cause an oil leak. And then I'm going to end up having to go into this transmission again, which I have no intention of doing. So for my particular engine, I am actually going to end up putting in this fancy Jim's bearing race because frankly, the, you know, this one is suspect at this point and it's got to go. So my next video, I'm actually going to be sweating this bad boy out and, uh, you know, we'll get another one pushed in and get my cases cleaned and hopefully I can uh, build a motor here at some point or at least, uh, you know, get my transmission built. So, you know, don't forget to subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.